Citizens speak out. People throughout Bahrain, China, France, Greece, Honduras, Iran, Israel, Libya, Palestine, Syria, and Yemen are speaking out to demand change from their governments that ends all discrimination, bringing lives of dignity and equality for themselves and fellow country persons. France, the Mechanics Trade Union for Air France began an indefinite strike on Monday, June 13, as workers call for pay raises. With Air France reporting short delays for both arriving and departing flights to and from Paris, Charles de Gaulle, and Orly airports, but no cancellations at this time. Greece. European finance ministers held an emergency meeting Tuesday to build consensus over a new plan to help Greece avoid bankruptcy. Although German finance minister Wolfgang Schaibler offered to provide more financial assistance from his country, other ministers at the meeting objected to the proposed terms. Bahrain. While the ruling regime in Bahrain claims that only 22 people are currently being tried for their participation in anti-government protests, groups like Amnesty International and activists in the country put the actual numbers of detained and on trial in military courts in into the hundreds. Various media also reported June 14th on the death of young activist Jabba Ibrahim Alawiyat just one day after he was released from jail, with witnesses stating he had been severely tortured during his detention. Iran. According to Xinhua News Agency, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad announced Tuesday during a meeting with Chinese President Hu Jintao that he is ready to talk with the five permanent members of the UN Security Council and Germany to resolve concerns over Iran's nuclear program. Palestine. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency reported on Tuesday that the unemployment rate of 45.2 percent in Gaza, Palestine, places it among the highest in the world, with Gazans who apply for assistance due to earnings of $1.60 US per day or less having increased to 300,000 over the past four years. In addition, hundreds of patients, some in critical condition, are suffering from a shortage of medicine, with the Red Cross in Gaza reporting Tuesday that it had donated all of its stored supplies and was waiting for an emergency shipment to arrive. Israel, Bedouin tribe members members who are also Israeli citizens accuse the government of crimes against their culture as the government authorizes the destruction of 35 entire Bedouin villages which had been standing long before the creation of the Israeli state. Honduras. The Organization of American States has readmitted Honduras as a member state after the government allowed former President Manuel Zelaya, who went into exile in 2009 when he was ousted from government, to return to the country and form a new political party. China. Reports that security officials in China's Guangzhou province had pushed an expecting mother to the ground on Friday, June 10th, while trying to clear an area sparked three days of demonstrations by migrant workers who are angry over inflation in food and housing prices, government corruption and income gaps relative to urban workers. The government deployed thousands of riot police with tear gas, backed up by armoured vehicles, in an attempt to ensure that the unrest does not grow into a larger, widespread movement. Syria. The Turkish government Tuesday reported that refugees fleeing the army's attacks in Jisr al shagur now number over 8,500 and are staying in camps constructed hastily across the Turkish border. With a continuous flow of refugees, Turkey faces increasing pressure in both political and economic exchanges with Syria as the nation tries to maintain relations with both the Syrian government and protesters. Thousands of other civilians have been waiting just inside Syria, ready to cross over if troops come near, while enduring thunderstorms and rain without shelter and food. Contrary to witnesses who state that the army has been responsible for recent killings and arrests of unarmed citizens in Jisr al shagur Syrian state TV reported Tuesday that the military has assumed control from armed group members and claimed to have seized a cache of weapons and other munitions. On Tuesday, activists reported that six civilians were killed in Ariha, near Syria's border with Iraq as security forces widened the area of crackdowns on pro-democracy protesters. Libya. On Monday, 28 Libyan activists were killed by security forces near Port Brega, with at least two dozen injured, as the activists also attempted to gain control of Zawiya, located 50 kilometers west of Tripoli. Meanwhile, longtime aide of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, Mr. Sassi Garada, has joined a large number of defecting officials and fled to Europe. The Canadian government on Tuesday announced its recognition of the Libya's activists' legitimacy in representing the people. Also on Tuesday, the US House of Representatives voted in favor of halting military operations in Libya. If approved by the Senate, U.S. troops that are now participating in the U.N.-sanctioned military operation in Libya would have to return within 60 days.
Yemen. More than 15,000 Yemeni citizens have sought shelter in schools throughout the port city Aden as they flee violence in Abiyan province. On Monday, the Yemeni government stated that it has arrested several people suspected of attempting to harm President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who is still being treated in Saudi Arabia for serious wounds. As we mourn the loss of precious lives and the people suffering, we pray for all conflicts to subside and that citizens in every country may decide to live side by side in shared harmony, dignity and freedom.